What's going on everybody? So for this project, we were looking to build a ladder hoist. Now this is for a roofing job that we just took on, and we have access to a lull telehandler and also a skid steer with forks, but we're going to be carting up a lot of materials for these roofs, and also on this building not all points are accessible with those machines. So I looked into buying a ladder hoist and kind of had sticker shock over the price. Uh, so I looked up how they were kind of made and, you know, the general outline of how they work and I felt pretty confident that we could make our own. So I pretty much started by disassembling an existing extension ladder that we had. Uh, I also started grabbing some materials just from around the garage. We have a lot of C-channel, angle iron, square stock, flat stock, and miscellaneous hardware. So the goal is kind of use what we got, try to make purchases for this particular project minimal. I knew I had to pick up the electric hoist. That's not something we had lying around. But as far as the metal goes, I chose C-channel for this first connection I'm making up. And just kind of the way I went about it was just holding the piece in, you know, cutting it down to size. You know, right here I'm working on a piece of flat stock, cutting out a specific pattern that's going to fit. And uh, you'll see by the end of the video. So once I get all those parts cut out, I moved on to welding them in place. Uh, I'm using my MIG welder for this. This is all mild steel too, so it's pretty easy to work with. Uh, pretty fast to get through and all that. Um, now, I do look at this like a working prototype, so I'm not really spending a lot of time on the aesthetics like making a beautiful bead. I'm just making sure that they're structurally sound and we're not going to have any issues because uh, it doesn't really need to look great, it's just going to work well. So at this point during the build, I was trying to figure out how to actually attach the electric hoist to the ladder. Uh, I pretty much decided to go with a mounting plate that mounts to the ladder and then the motor mounts to that plate. So I'll cover that in more detail at the end of the video. So we ended up saving building out the carriage for last. Uh, it ended up being probably the easiest part of the entire build. Pretty much because there was no welding involved and the cuts are really simple to make. And we're pretty much just making a perpendicular connection with roughly a 45 degree support bracket on the bottom. So being all cold connections is easy to work with. It goes by quick and like I said, really minimal cutting. All right, so here we go. This is the first test. And I was pretty much so confident that it would work. I was like, yeah, just send me up. So I sat down on the basket, we just threw a piece of plywood over it, and yeah, no problems, nice and smooth, real happy with that. Alright, so, ladder's completely built out, we're about a day out from testing it on the job site, but I wanted to go over in detail kind of the connections that I made up, and maybe give you some insight as to how to go about it yourself. So I'll start here at the top, because that's what I actually started fabricating first. Now, the first thing here is that we're working essentially with an I-beam, it's made out of aluminum, but that's essentially what the ladder is on both sides. So inside this channel, I used 3 8 bar stock and on the top, some three inch C channel. Now this is just material that I had lying around. You could use, you know, pretty much any type of tubing up here or another size C channel. I just thought matching it with this, it just comes out looking good. I hit it with a little aluminum spray paint too, just to match the ladder. So cosmetically it matches, it looks good. Um, but yeah, basic idea is that this just slots in and you're utilizing kind of all this surface area in here and on the vertical, the I-beam, when it's in compression. So you're really getting the full strength out of this structure rather than putting too much stress on just this edge or just the face here. I'm using nylon um, lock nuts here, and that's just nut and bolts together right on the back side here. So nothing super fancy, but it's enough structure to withstand the pulling force, which is running down to the motor there. And then on the other end, it runs to the actual, um, we'll call it the basket. So yeah, this was just some high strength steel U-bolt, but this could have been a shackle. Pretty much anything that you could utilize to get this hook through um, would suffice. And then it's just welded through to the backside. I think what I did was I drilled two holes and then stuck it through and then weld the tops. But yeah, so it, it just parallels itself. It's the same on both sides. It's pretty simple, but this is definitely gonna be strong enough because I wouldn't even bring this thing any close, anything close to even 500 pounds. <clears throat> I think that maybe at most you go like 350. Um, yeah, so that's essentially that setup. Now next up, we have the motor mount plate and the wheels. We'll just start with the wheels, that's simplest here. Uh, this is just a threaded rod that I had, and again, I have some nylon stop nuts on there. These are just some wheels that I had lying around, and then that threaded rod just gets stuck through the actual rung of the ladder. So technically, you could put those wheels wherever you want, but this works out well because it sits on that platform. You can pull it from the top and then just kind of cart it around, but I would recommend putting those wheels on because this thing actually gets kind of heavy and it's just awkward. It's not something kind of easy to pick up, particularly with one person. So if you can, you got to line around or you want to go spend a little bit of money, try to get some wheels on it. As far as the motor mount plate, I ended up going with aluminum. Um, I'm not sure the actual gauge on it, but it's around like an inch to maybe a quarter inch, uh, excuse me, an eighth of an inch to a quarter inch in thickness. But um, 
you know, and I did have some steel plate. I, I'd almost say go with steel because you can't, you're not gonna go wrong with that. It's not gonna shear, that's gonna bend out of form or anything, but I think the aluminum should work. So essentially what I had is I took the plate, I screwed it in with some self-tapping screws on the three rungs and one above it there. And then I have nut and bolt going through that gets fastened to the back side of the rung here. And again, up top, I have two more. And honestly, the self-tapping screws would probably be enough, but I just wanted to play it safe, have an actual mechanical connection that pierces the rung. So that way this can't get sheared off or like peeled itself off the motor. That's just from Harbor Freight. This is an electric hoist. Uh, I want to say this is the 1300 pound lift and that's overkill. They make smaller ones, but the cable wasn't as long. So this I think comes with about a 40 foot cable. So that's more than enough to kind of go to the top loop around and then make it back for the basket that gets, you know, carted up and down. So here on the back side, you can see the four mounting bolts and those are actually supplied with the electric hoist when you buy it. There's just four um, threaded inserts on the back side of this red plate here that the actual motor comes mounted to. So pretty simple, just scribe that out, punch some holes in and then just bolt that in. Um, you can just see that's where the plate gets bolted through. And like I said, the rest get uh, self-tapping screws. I ended up adding an extra sheet of this diamond plating just for extra strength because like I said, this is aluminum, not steel. I guess if I had to do it again, I'd probably just go with steel. That way I wouldn't be second guessing this, but I don't really see any issues coming out of this because again, this is only lifting up maybe 350 pounds. So I don't see that shearing out, but you know, it could, you never know. All right, so last up is the actual carriage with the sled, the basket, whatever you like to call it. Uh, this was actually kind of one of the easiest parts. Um, what you have to have though, is you have to have a section of ladder that fits inside the other channel. So this actual ladder itself, uh, it didn't have that style. So we ended up going with another aluminum ladder we had that fits inside. And you can even see here, it, it does register behind it, but having a wider ladder so wider rungs would have been a little better. So if this was just maybe a quarter inch wider, it would fit in there nice and secure, but I don't see any problems happening from that. But we'll pretty much just start with the structure. So this front side, obviously it's just a section of ladder and then perpendicular to that is another section of ladder. I just used angle brackets. It'd be nice if we'd use angle brackets with a 45 support, but we just kind of had these lying around. So the top and bottom. So that also just make sure that this is perpendicular. I did that up here as well, but it's behind the wood, you can't see. So that's how we fastened it. And then we just have this uh, angle iron and that just got lined up pretty much top to bottom. And again, just some, you can even see them from the top here, self-tapping uh, self screws and just using, you know, whatever penetrations went through so you can see it from the top here. So yeah, I had three going in across the I-beam of the ladder here and we just punched those in. Um, so yeah, all cold mechanical connections because this is aluminum ladder meets steel. Like if it was all steel, I would have just welded it, but it's nice actually having this made of aluminum. It's nice and light. And then all the cold connections are really easy to make. Um, <laughs> now this is actually where it got kind of fun. Uh, this is a skateboard wheel. And these are just things that I have lying around. Um, and essentially you, you need some type of wheel or a bearing to kind of go up against the face because that's what actually holds the system. And as it's riding, that's what it rides across is right on that track. It's, you know, obviously if you ever use an extension ladder, you know that it rides on the back end, but how do I explain this? When the ladder's tilted up against the building, it's going to have its weight on the back end of this wheel. And when this is getting pulled up with the hoist, the wheel ends up rolling and it makes it, you know, a lot less friction than just aluminum grinding on aluminum. So again, that was actually really simple. It just gets bolted in. This is actually the wheel on this side. So you can just see that. Um, and we pretty much just held this in place. And then and by which I mean, we actually held the wheel in place and then we drilled our whole nut and bolt together. I mean, nothing too complicated. Same at the top here, nothing complicated. But yeah, we ended up going with four wheels. That way we have enough structure to make sure it doesn't like uh, jump around too much while it's getting lifted up and that it's uh, secured. Um, just a simple plywood platform. That way when we're doing the bundles of shingles or other materials, you know, they don't slump over because shingles are somewhat flexible. Um, and it's also just nice just to have a platform. Last up, this pretty much mimics what's up top, but the reverse is that the um, connection here isn't on the bottom it has to face upwards because it ends up getting pulled obviously through the pulley that's up there that's tied into the hoist down there but um unlike up there where i went on the inside of the i-beam that wasn't an option because you'd be hitting this and because this is riding on that track that would be in the way so what i did instead and we can see on the bottom is i went on the inside this all got welded and again i just used c-channel because it was the same profile as this aluminum ladder it's just three inch 
Um, this was actually a quarter inch stock that we had left over. I use the same nylon nut and bolt fasteners, that way they don't back themselves out. Um, and then this wasn't a shackle, this was an eye bolt. Same thing that I just drilled a hole, I welded up the back, I welded up the front here, and then that just gives you a connection point. And again, this is probably overkill, you know, two bolts. But you just want to make sure that whatever you're using as your connection that's going to get pulled doesn't shear out because your load is going to be sitting here and then there's essentially no braking system. So whatever that is has to be stout enough to withstand at least, I'd say, 500 pounds of force. But I think that'll do the job just fine. Uh, I'm pretty confident in it. And all the tests that we did at least around the garage look pretty good. So there you have it. That's the whole ladder hoist system. I don't think it was too hard of a project. Uh, I mean, we got it pretty much done in a day. The next day was more like cosmetic things like painting and adding the wood on the top of the basket there. Um, time will tell, this is about to go out on its first job, so that's usually the best test for these types of things is to use them, observe its weak points. I mean, obviously something breaks, then there you go. But I'm pretty confident in this. Um, I'd like to see, you know, pretty much its consistency. I'm not too worried about like something structurally failing, but maybe those wheels might get jammed up or something. So hopefully it works out well. If not, we'll iterate, make it better. Um, I really like the project ended up saving a lot of money for us. And uh, yeah, if you have the means to do it yourself, uh, I'd recommend doing it.